It's April 24th, 2015, and the London-based radio station Circadian Rhythms are hosting a live cypher between UK grime MCs K9, Diaman, and Frostar. On beat selection is the upcoming producer and DJ Missing No, as well as a fellow rising star by the name of Darko, already hailed for his work amongst grime royalty with even more in years to come. But just who is Darko? Born Davil Bakari, Darko grew up in northwest London. Some of his earliest memories growing up consisted of playing pirated video games that his dad would bring back from Pakistan, such as Doom 1, Doom 2, Heretic, and Hexen. He'd also gain an interest in garage music at a young age, listening to artists such as the London-based duo Oxide and Neutrino, and the Battersea-based group that they were also a part of, So Solid Crew. This would also segue into his love of grime music, which he'd elaborate on in a 2014 interview with Noisy, stating, Grime wasn't really a discovery for me. It just organically happened out of garage. That was not only the music that was popping, but the culture in my area of London. I used to listen to Oxide and Neutrino and So Solid a lot back in primary and secondary school, and they certainly had those flavours about them. Come to think of it, the first grime track I heard was by Oxide and Neutrino, Rap This. That was a big thing, because nothing sounded like that at all. By the time he was 17 years old, he'd also begin attending UK dubstep nights, such as the club night Forward during 2008, a club night originally hosted at the now defunct nightclub Plastic People in Shoreditch. Forward would not only be one of the cornerstones in establishing UK dubstep and grime, but would also provide a platform to upcoming producers at the time, such as Scream, Koki, Benga, and Marla. And by this point, Bakari would also be entrenched in grime music, listening to grime MCs such as Kano, Some manners don't like me, they try and bad mind me when Kano comes to town. Gigs. Shit's fuck cause my money ain't up. And I'm on the low. And Mr. Wong. Oh my god, it's Wong X. Chinese boy, he's got on a long edge. We've been fast every day with Dolet. Cause I'm not double. It's unknown if Bakari had any prior experience in making music, but the first known release under his Darko alias would be in 2010, with the release of his first project, Serotonin EP. Most of this project would unfortunately be lost to time, with only one of the tracks I could find off of the project being the title track, and from what I can guess, it was potentially an ambient project. But if anyone potentially has a file copy of the EP, I'd appreciate the clarification if that's not the case. The following year, in 2011, would mark an encouragement for people to keep an eye on the upcoming producer, with the release of his future garage single, Highly. A six minute fusion of ambient synths and garage drums, which also sampled and chopped the lyrics from R&B artist Cassie's 2006 track, me and you. The single would start making the rounds online over the course of 2011 and 2012, with various remixes and edits of the track bringing further attention, such as the VIP mix and Darko's own grime refix of the track. The grime refix would also attract the interest of former Vice journalist Ezra Marcus, later leading on to the aforementioned interview with the publication in 2014. 2013 would be his largest release of material so far, with a 15-track mixtape in July titled Zero, which would gain a sequel a few years later, and a 7-track EP, I Ain't a Sweet Boy, at the end of the year in November, both projects being a continuation of his future garage style. Unfortunately, both projects have now been taken off of most streaming platforms, and are most likely extremely hard to find copies of online today. Sadly, the only documentation of their existence so far being on the Rate Your Music website. But despite this huge loss of material years later, 
2014 would mark the beginning of labels and publications alike taking notice of Darko's work. Bakari would begin leaning into a grime style this year in his projects starting off in April with the release of Sin P, released under the Brixton-based producer and fellow grime enthusiast Visionist's label Lost Codes. The project would have a darker and heavier sound than Bakari's previous work, and could even draw some comparisons to the industrial sound of Evie and Christ's Waterfall EP, released that month prior. He'd then drop Fate EP two months later under Gobstopper Records, juxtaposing the darker grime sound of Sin EP with a lighter and more ethereal sound similar to the work of Black Cray, and early Young Lean. Drawing inspirations from grime, trap, Vaporwave and video game instrumentals, similar to those found in JRPGs such as Square Enix's Final Fantasy franchise and Chrono Trigger. An inspiration which Bakari made clear of in an April 2014 article with Vice, in which he listed off some of his favourite video game OSTs, such as Aquatic Ambience from Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> You can hear the cry of the planet from Final Fantasy VII. And Star Stealing Girl from Chrono Trigger's sequel, Chrono Cross. Darko would make an interesting comment about this track in particular, which can also serve as foreshadowing for later in this video, stating, Star Stealing Girl speaks to me on many, many levels, and to this day, I've never encountered a track that I've been more obsessed with from a video game. I don't even like sharing it around too much, because it's like, it's my track to me. It's the perfect song. I want to make something this good one day. I just haven't got enough XP points yet. At the end of 2014, the West London grime MC K9 would release a free mixtape to the internet titled Mad in the Cut. All tracks on the project had been executively recorded by Darko. Before working on this project together, the two had met prior at Coco Camden after being introduced by a mutual friend of theirs. They'd also both bond over being from West London and their mutual love for grime. Darko had also already known of K9 from his 2009 SBTV freestyle before they had met. Oh. They then begin working on Mad in the Cut together at some point in 2014, recording the entirety of it within a week, with a DIY booth made of sweatshirts. The project would stand out for its dark production and its even darker subject matter, as K9 stuck out from other grime MCs. Instead of witty or often comedic bars that other MCs were spitting around that time, or participating in clash battles such as Lord of the Mics, K9 was rapping about the violence he had witnessed and grew up around. These lyrical conventions would become labelled as road rap, or what would now commonly be considered as UK drill music by today's standards. K9 would make this different differentiation very clear in track 2 with Mad in the Cut titled I Spit. The overall subject matter of the project would include topics of drug use, drug dealing, gang violence, and the struggles of living in London's council estates. However, the track that would stand out on the mixtape was K9's display of emotional vulnerability for the loss of a friend in track 6, also known as Stress. Life is dread, life is dread While our best friend gets shot in the head White man bang over blue in the red How about bang over food and the bread Had to bang over what you in the ends Cause he didn't come with the food that he said Life is stress, life is stress That's why I puff for the zoo to the cess Stress was a track produced by Darko and Visionist 
and served as the backing to K-9's heartfelt letter to the loss of his best friend, MC Vega, who was murdered on July 3rd, 2011, after a gun had fired off near him, which resulted in the bullet ricocheting and hitting him. The track would also be accompanied by a music video directed by Jim Alexander, who started out producing minimalist music videos for the mysterious artists Triad God and Palmistry, which would end up catching the attention of members of SBE and Drain Gang, leading to a string of videos for Blade and collaboration with other directors such as Amal Gachard and others for the likes of Caro, Ty Boy, and Young Lean. The video would be a mix of home videos recorded of a holiday to Gambia that K9 and Vega went on in 2002, along with footage shot with K9 in Vega's living room as well as the graveyard where he was buried. Being filmed and edited as organically as possible to give the audience an idea of who Vega was and show the grief that K9 and many others were going through in the wake of his passing. VA, wish you were back. I don't wanna be here making a trap. I just wanna be upstairs in your room with a split for the diesel bottle of that. I don't wanna be in your front room grieving, making tributes late in the evening. I don't wanna be having sleepless nights. Big Vega, I can't wait till I see him. <laughs> Racist, but they're gonna be white. <laughs> In June of 2015, Darko released a five-track EP titled Solace, a compilation of tracks ranging from grime, trap, bass, and EDM, released under Rinse FM, a legendary platform for grime and garage, which started out as a pirate radio station in the 1990s, to then gaining a community radio license in 2011, becoming an almost full circle moment for Bakari, as Rinse FM was ingrained in the culture he grew up around. Along with a remix of Abrasion by producer Suicide Year, the lead single Fuchsia would have a music video released on the Rinse FM YouTube channel, consisting of a montage of phone footage shot by Darko or his friends, whether it be hanging out, DJing at shows, or just his day-to-day -day life, giving a more down-to-earth perspective to the life of a DJ. In fact, this lifestyle would get a little bit more exciting in October with... Trance Party 4. Evian Christ. Total freedom. Lorenzo Semi. Darko. Blue Bond. Kablam. Mickey City. Liverpool. Nice one. London. Top one. Sheffield. Get sorted. In October 2015, Darko would be called up to join the roster for the fourth edition of Evian Christ's critically acclaimed club night, Trance Party, to embark on a three-day UK tour of Liverpool, London and Sheffield, becoming his debut at Trance Party and the first of his four fixtures so far at the club night, making him one of the most frequently booked artists at Trance Party and solidifying him as a staple in the UK's electronic music scene. In October 2016, Darko signed with XL Records to release one project titled Oceana EP, a four-track project which strayed towards a mixture of experimental electronic music with elements of trap. The lead single of the EP, Forever, would also have a music video released four days before the project's official release to promote it, consisting of CGI visuals which made reference to various pieces of media pop culture, such as Asuna from the popular manga and anime series Sword Art Online, Cloud and Tifa from Final Fantasy VII, the Energy Sword from the Halo franchise, 
and Neuvern from Pokemon X and Y. However, the video would have a deeper meaning to Darko than just references to his favourite media. Speaking on it as a whole in an interview with The Fader, Darko stated, The video represents the unconditional love I have for the city I've lived in forever. But knowing it's growing ever more one-sided, it's like that toxic relationship you just play along with because you don't know any better. Riding a hover bike through the stars gets lonely, so fire up Darko's latest project to keep you company. Darko. Adult Swim presents Darko's Xenotype, five tracks of absolute joyriding bliss. Cruise on over to adultswim.com slash Darko lock and load. And remember, get your brain service every 5,000 light years. Darko Xenotype, free from Adult Swim. In an extremely bizarre turn of events the following year, Darko would work together with Cartoon Network's watershed counterpart, Adult Swim, to release a free project titled Xenotype, which would be free to download on the Adult Swim website in October 2017. This hasn't been the network's first time doing a specialised music project with an artist before, as Adult Swim had also worked with the likes of MF Doom to promote his collab album with Danger Mouse titled the Mouse and the Mask in 2005, and Killer Mike's rap music in 2011, even including music from producers such as Darko, among other artists, in the channel bumps before or after an ad break. <laughs> to coincide with this project as well, a music video for the ear-screeching Terror Gang would be released and debut on Adult Swim after an evening marathon of Samurai Jack. Consisting of bright neon edited footage, along with videos found on YouTube, such as makeup tutorials and high speed racing. To further add on to the overall absurdism of the music video, Bakari would also include footage of him driving in a racing game to further confuse the viewer between what's real and what isn't. And whether you were taking acid or not, the video overall would be considered quite the head fuck. Yo, man, what are you saying? Look, man, the video's gonna take me a while. You know how long these things take. Speak for yourself, man. You haven't dropped anything in, like, what, three years? Come on. Yeah, I know, I know. Of course, man, catch you later. 2018 to 2019 would be a rather quiet period for Darko, with the odd gig and single here and there. But not much else was going on until 2020 when Darko signed to year one. Darko's musical career would further elevate after signing to the Swedish Year One label around mid-2019, most known for including the likes of Young Lean, Drain Gang, and Viagra Boys in their artist roster. This new venture with the label would push Darko's work to a wider audience, along with a new generation of listeners. Starting off in May 2020 with a guest mix for Malibu's NTS radio show United in Flames. He'd originally contribute to the show in 2018, when it was originally hosted on Radar Radio, but would later be exclusively moved to NTS in 2020. This move to NTS combined with a high increase in people tuning in to the online station due to COVID lockdown would make for perfect timing to introduce Darko to an international audience. He'd also gain a placement on Year One's first compilation tape, Rift One, with the fourth track, Scrapyard 1 vs 2. A 
hard-hitting industrial techno track in collaboration with producer Graham Norgate. Famous for his soundtracking for video games such as GoldenEye 007, The Time Splitters franchise, Perfect Dark, and Killer Instinct further cementing Bakari's love for video games as an artistic medium, and he would take this medium to the next level, with his next mixtape, Zero Two. Released in August 2020 as his debut project under Year One, and would feature the likes of Malibu, Visionist, and Zero Come Ups. The mixtape would take on a world-building concept inspired by his love of video game soundtracks, to blend a mixture of trap, grime, trance, and ambient sounds to soundtrack a journey across a smog-ridden London, further reinforced by the smog-engulfed skyscraper depicted in the cover art for this project. But there was also something else worth noting in this project, which stood out from Darko's previous work. The presence of piano pieces in the tracks, specifically in the tracks After Years, UIC, and Reverie Eternity, adding another emotional layer to Bakari's work and reflecting on his inspiration from JRPG OSTs such as his love for Star Stealing Girl back in 2014, bringing a sound and feeling similar to the emotional journeys and quests players would embark on in these video games. Zero Two perhaps being the soundtrack to an RPG with no gameplay. But Bakari would increase on this world building aspect, with his debut album the following year, That Feeling. <laughs> Released on June 4th, 2021, Eternity would be the crown jewel of Darko's discography so far, taking world building to the next level by collaborating with artists Sibel Montet and Connor Cianoli to create his own fictional JRPG, centred around three characters and the theme of friendship. Speaking about this in an interview with Underground Underdogs on the day of the project's release, Darko stated, I wanted to make a story about bonds and kinship and allies. I think that whole theme of kinship really came to light over the last year, when we are relying more and more on the support of our friends virtually. Bakari would specifically draw this theme of friendship from the cast of Final Fantasy IX and other games in the franchise, and how they work together to end a conflict between two nations in the fictional world of Gaia. These themes and aesthetics from the Final Fantasy franchise would reflect heavily in the concept designs of the characters. The music video for the lead single, Shining Star, the Eternity.io website, and the art booklet, CD, and t-shirt which fans could purchase, and overall heavily soundtracked to the grandiose mix of trance, EDM, and trap in the album to bring the whole thing together into one immense package. Darko was at the top of his game by this point, infusing everything he held dear to create create an album that was loved by critics and fans alike. Whether it were to be listened to in your bedroom or on the dance floor, Eternity had cemented its place as a hallmark for the future of electronic music. And it was time for Darko to take a victory lap across the clubs and ensure that Eternity would live up to its name. Good, good, very good. Uh, Mr. Darko. <laughs> With UK COVID lockdown restrictions ending in April 2021, it would mean that club nights and concerts could return to normal. And with Darko's last gig being at Trance Party 9 in 2019, it meant that a return to the stage after over a year was needed. Starting off in November 2021, joining Missing No for the first edition of Circadian Rhythm's Cycle Club Night followed up by his third fixture at Trance Party for Trance Party Liquid the following month. Then, starting Summer 2022 Strong at Razzmatazz in Barcelona for Year One's Artist Showcase on June 6th, shelling the club with a completely ethereal sound. Then returning to London 12 days later to perform at venue MOT for Star Returnal, a collaboration night between the East Asian London promoter Eastern Margins and Toji's art director Eternal USA, featuring sets from Toji, Darko, Palmistry, EOU, IB03Y, Frillium Angels, 
DJ Aruby, Down to Earth, and Eternal USA. Then followed up in September with Swedish trance DJ Femi for sets at Hashim Ali's Hawkshire DIY Club Night at Stereo Glasgow. Then going on to play in Dublin, Ireland for Ethereal Skies and Helsinki, Finland for Club Zero. And then finishing off 2022 at Trance Party for Leib's Dream. 2021 to 2022 was an amazing return to form for Darko and his live shows. He was welcomed back to the decks by promoters and punters alike, who had been anxiously waiting for his return post-lockdown. But just as quickly as he made his appearance again, he'd also disappear just as quickly, going radio silent over the course of 2023, with many curious as to where he'd been or what he's been up to. But he'd resurface in March 2024, with a story post announcing new music soon, along with the release of two singles in collaboration with Toji, those being Frozen Rain and Phenomeno, along with two UK shows in Manchester for a year one showcase and a set at Colour Factory in London alongside Missing No. And with rumours of an album and a tour of Asia soon approaching this year, it clearly shows that even in his absence, Darko's presence in electronic music will be felt from Northwest London to the world for eternity. Yeah.